Next into the tank is an entrepreneur's obsession turned into a business. Hey, Sharks. My name is Melissa Barto. I'm from New York City, and I'm seeking $100,000 for 20% of my company, Wanna Date. I had my first date just three years ago during college. And let me tell you, I've had a lot of dates ever since. At least a few every day. Sometimes even more. Sharks, I love dates so much that I created. <laughs> Wanna date? Oh, a line of date-based spreads that are natural, vegan, and get this, they're totally allergen-free. You see, sharks, dates are my absolute favorite fruit. These tasty little things satisfy all my cravings, power me through my workouts, Damn, nice. and keep me energized all day long. I love dates so much that I wanted to spread them on everything. And the best part is that my date spreads come in all of your favorite flavors. Chocolate, vanilla, cinnamon, and let's not forget pumpkin spice. And at just 30 calories per serving. Want a date is the perfect go-to alternative for any nut butter or syrup out there. So, sharks, no more cheating on your diets. What do you all say? Want a date? Want a date? Yep. We'd love to try it. Try yes, it. I know you can all use a little more love in your life. So Absolutely. samples. All right, for Damon. Who are? Thank you. That's a big tree of food. Thank Hi. you. Do you have a, just a natural date, or they're all flavored? All flavors. Okay. Shame you didn't get us enough food. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Melissa. You are welcome. Yeah. Food to last a lifetime. Thank you. Oh, yum. What is this, yogurt base? That is an acai bowl with mixed berries on top and chocolate date spread drizzled. Wow. Next so, to that is a bowl mm. of overnight oats sweetened only with vanilla want a date, a stack of pumpkin spice want a date pancakes, and then a date butter and banana sandwich with cinnamon want a date and a side of cinnamon date spread bacon. So delicious. I like them, but it tastes so sweet. Are you sure it's only... um? 30 calories per serving. Dates typically have a lot of calories. Yes, so if you think about it, most jams and jellies are actually 40 or 50. Nut butters are actually 80 to 90 calories. Plus, we don't add any oils. We mix with water. Here's a fact, Melissa, you may not know. The yeah. date fruit, along with camel milk, can sustain a human being indefinitely. That's how many Bedouins centuries ago lived in the desert. How Absolutely do you remarkable. know this story? Remarkable you know Because that. I know. Camel what people milk. don't understand about the date is one of the healthiest fruits on earth, and actually is lower cal than many fruits. No, the dates are a super fruit. I tell everyone dates are the next like it avocados or cauliflower in terms of food uh, trends. Super schmoop. They're delicious, but so underutilized. Tell us about your sales and how you're selling it. It's been about ten months. To date, I've sold to date <laughs> just under <laughs> thirty-one thousand dollars. 10% of that's been through my website, and then 35% is through events. I go to Christmas markets around New York City on the weekends, vegan fairs, and 55% is wholesale. Melissa, tell us about you. Originally, I'm from just Northwest Georgia, a town called Kennesaw, and I just graduated from NYU, actually, three weeks ago. Congrats. Congrats. Are you working on this 100% of the time? Because yes. 31,000 in sales, living in New York City, you know, yeah. I'm sure the... My dad supports me still. So. So how much does one jar cost you to make? Uh, right now it costs me $2.40 to make Ooh. with the label and all. That's I a sell lot. it. Excuse me? That's a lot. Yes. I can get costs down though to about $1.70 or 80. And what do you sell it for? On my website for $12. $12? Wow. Yes. And people are willing to pay $12 a jar? Yes. I've actually never had anyone complain about $12 per really? jar. Yeah. Did you do any type of market research, though, where you would, like, reach out to people and ask them, would you buy this? How often would you use it? Things like that. Um, not formally, but also I've learned people have no idea what they do want, you know? Amen. The challenge with that is you're there, right? And you're educating them, right? When I first started, I used to stand out on uh, 125th Street in Harlem right outside the Apollo when the Apollo Theater let out. And I got really good responses. They told me what they thought about my T-shirts, and my mama, everything, right? <laughs> um, but then when I went to put it in stores, it didn't move. When nobody was there to tell the story, I got stuck. So I think as a crowded market that I know nothing about, and 
I think it's gonna be a challenge really just educating people on how badly they need this, so I'm out. I feel like it's very early for us to know if people want dates or not. It was delicious. Um, I wish you good luck, but I, I'm gonna go well, out. I'm, I hope you change your mind. I'm gonna make dates main street. The same way avocados and cauliflower, everything. That's why I chose flavors to lower the inhibitions of customers who have never had dates, heard of dates, don't know the health benefits. But Melissa, why didn't you do just a plain flavor for people who like dates? So I do have, actually, I just developed a plain flavor. But why the flavors at all to start? If you're gonna turn dates into a superfood, you gotta let the star of the show be the star of the show. So where are you, you going know, with this I'm, I'm just, I'm disappointed in some respects. Two sharks are out, and Mark has an issue with the line of flavors of Melissa's date butter company, Wanna Date. The plain flavor's coming. I know, but would you do just that? And abandon all the flavors? For right now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if you want to make it a superfood, make it the star of the show. Here's where, for me, it falls apart. When I was starting my business, if I didn't make a deal within two weeks, I was dead. I needed to live somewhere and eat. What is in your way, I believe, is that your father is helping you. Because succeeding is an option versus a necessity. And I found that the people that really succeed have a real necessity. They have to do it or the sky's gonna fall in. With the absence of that, I can't believe enough to put my money in, so for that reason, no. Well, I won't be homeless if this fails, but I do everything on my own. I've, I run my web, sorry. <laughs> Like, my dad just believes in me, you know? Like, I'm, I'm, I've never had anything handed to me in my whole life. I'm not like a rich kid. I don't sleep. I carry cases of this all over New York. I work events. I do them all myself. I, nobody helps me. But take away that security blanket of having your rent paid, and the comparison would be like night and day what you can accomplish. I've seen it over and over again with so many people. Failure is just when you quit. I don't quit, so this won't fail because I will go until it succeeds. Listen, I, I started out and my mother mortgaged the house. And without her mortgaging the home, I couldn't have financed my first couple of shirts. So, I mean, that's Barbara's opinion. You know what, Melissa, I don't agree. I, I understand from an investment perspective, there really there is value when someone's back's against the wall. We've all have faced it, right? But that's like saying, if Barbara's right, that means none of our kids will, can ever do anything on their own. And I can't, I refuse to believe that. Like, I hate asking him for money. And this is the first time I've ever had to. And I'm gonna pay him every single penny back. That's why I work hard every day. Melissa, my problem with your deal is it's too early to be worth half a million bucks. There's a lot that's going to happen before you actually get scale. And I wish you the best, but I'm out. So now there's me and you. Do you have competition? Is there anybody else selling date butter? The closest thing is one that's full of coconut oil, coconut butter. It's hot. 10 times the calories, it has fat, it has cholesterol. I just went vegetarian, so I'm always looking for things that are healthy, healthy for my family. Absolutely. When you walked in, and other than thinking, what the hell is this, initially, the idea of a date spread was great, because I love dates, but you gotta be smaller, cheaper, easier to ship, and you have to make dates just plain. Are you willing to do all that? Absolutely, we can look into other packaging options, absolutely. Okay, so I'll make you an offer. $100,000, but I want 33%. 33%. Right, because it's gonna take some time, it's gonna take some effort, but there you go, that's your offer. You got an offer, what do you wanna do? Because I've learned that it never hurts to ask. No. No? Oh my gosh. We asked it already. You can counter to it. Go with your gut. This is your business. Just tell Mark Cuban to take a walk. I'll take it. I want to work with you anyways. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Ta-da! Uh, thank nice you, Mark. Smart move, thank Melissa. Thank you, thank you. Smart thank you. move. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. Right. Smart right. move. Thank you, everyone. All right. Good, Good luck to you. Talk soon. <laughs> I've 
been an underdog my whole life. Barbara not believing in me is just one in another million people. And I always prove everyone wrong. I just work harder. I put my head down and hustle, and I'll just keep doing that. That's what I've always done and always will do. First into the tank is a product to ensure you always know who's at your front door. Who's there? It's Jamie. Here to pitch. Who? It's Jamie. Come in. Sharks. Wouldn't it have been nice to know who was behind the door before you let me in? With my product, you can. My name is Jamie Siminoff. I'm from Los Angeles, California. My product is the DoorBot. I'm seeking $700,000 for a 10% stake in the company. Consumers are currently spending billions of dollars outfitting their homes with products that work with smartphones. However, one of the most ubiquitous technologies, the doorbell, has not changed since it was invented in 1880. Until now, introducing the DoorBot, the first ever video doorbell built for the smartphone. With DoorBot, you can see and speak with visitors from anywhere. But I didn't invent DoorBot just to make our lives more convenient. It also adds needed security. Let me show you. Mark, let's just say this is your house in Dallas. You'll see on the screen here that I'm projecting the DoorBot app from my smartphone to make it easier to see the demo. Now, just like a regular call, when someone rings the doorbot, you can see them and decline if it's a, someone that you don't want to talk to, or accept and say hello to your visitor. Think of it as caller ID for your front door. <laughs> ah! <laughs> hey, good looking doorbot guy. <laughs> hey, Mark, it's your good friend, Mr. Wonderful. I wanted to have you join me on this deal with DoorBot. I think we can get them to go all royalties and no equity. <laughs> Mark, we know that no real entrepreneur is going to accept that deal. And now you can tell Mr. Wonderful to scram. And the best thing is you can do it without having to be face to face with him. Now, sharks, join me. And the next time you hear, it'll be now, who wants to be first to ring my bell? Jamie, what if you hit accept? You then hit what accept, happens? then the light goes blue, mm -hmm. and then you can talk to them. So your voice comes out of it? Your voice comes out of it. It's got a microphone and speaker, like so it's two-way audio, one-way video. If someone came up and said, hmm, eyeball there, can they just take it off? Because all burglars ring the doorbell first. <laughs> yeah. You know what, though, Mark? That's actually true. Burglars are not usually violent criminals. They want to see if someone's home. They want the opportunity to go into a house that's not, that does not have people in it. So it's actually true. People do ring the doorbell. It's very hard to remove. And we also have offered that any customer that has one stolen, we will replace it for free of charge. And how much does each one of these units sell for? $199. What are your costs to make it? Uh, $81.83 is our cost landed in our uh, warehouse in the United States. And you sell it to retailers? So far, we've only sold direct on our own online store. Uh, we are launching with our first retailer in November, uh, which is Staples. We launched nine months ago. We've done, uh, in aggregate, a million dollars in sales so far. Good for you. And You've done a million dollars so far? Wow. In the last month, we've done $250,000 in sales. Our sales have grown month over month. All online, Jamie. All online, all direct. Do you have any competitors? Currently, we do not have any direct competitors. When I say direct, we are the first video doorbell built for the smartphone. Now, there are other video doorbells out there that go to a, a panel. It's not two-way, so you don't have communication from that. You can just How see who's there. How much does your now, competition cost? Uh, the lowest price camera would be you know, $50 to $100, up to thousands of dollars for some of these systems. But we're not trying to compete with the $100,000 systems that integrate cameras and everything in your home. That's, that, that to me, is a totally different so market. What we're trying to do is disrupt that market it. to give that to everybody, the norm, to give it to my wife who's at home, who's in the bedroom with my five-year-old. I'm away, and at 8 o'clock at night and it's dark out, someone knocks on the door. I like the product, but are there bigger solutions that can come in and kind of push this out the door? This category will exist. I mean, the doorbell will stay there. It doesn't get trumped See, by technology. I think drive there's, a that there's a thousand different ways to alert. What business is not going to get replaced by future technology? But the, here's the it's, problem. It's about being able to be nimble and actually Amen. be part of that change. I'm going to jump in here. I think that you have potential to do a lot more with this, but 
I'm not connecting to that this does enough at this time to distinguish itself as different from what else is out there on the market for the higher price point. And so for that reason, I'm out. Okay. We're not comparing ourselves to a, a, a cheap video doorbell that has a little tiny... No you know, one's arguing panel. the quality of the product. I like it. I think you're gonna do great with it. But I've gotta be able to say, you know what, when I jump in, I've gotta add enough value that this company, instead of being worth seven million, could be worth 80 million, 90 million. I just don't see that progression. And for that reason, I'm out. When I, when I look at businesses, I look at the three tiers that could hit, luxury, mid-tier, and lower tier. Uh, obviously, we understand the luxury market where we have the twenty dollars and $30,000 systems and all that type of stuff. That's not for that. The mid-tier is the ADTs of the world that most likely will just add this to their services in some sense. I, I'm wrestling with where this goes in the market. I just don't think it's for me. I'm out. Personally, I'm a security guy, so the idea of having another access point at, on my house like that freaks me out a little bit, because all those ADT and all those other ones are hardwired. I can't hack into those, right? So I think you've priced a lot of value into it, but I think my real struggle with it is it's really not an internet play, it's a consumer device. But you're pricing out $199, that, that price point is gonna start dropping quickly as your volumes go up. For that reason, I'm out. Sorry about that. No, Don't send just, him to my house. <laughs> it's, just, it's just you and you now. Jamie, let's take stock of what's happened here. You made a few jokes about Mr. Wonderful at the beginning and about the royalty structure. Am I gonna regret that, Mr. Wonderful? <laughs>
Today, I'm seeking a $100,000 investment in exchange for 10% equity in the Scrub Daddy business. It's the greatest kitchen scrubbing tool you ever used because Scrub Daddy completely changes its texture by just adjusting your water temperature. Let me show you how that works. Here I've got some hot water. Here I've got some cold water. When I immerse the Scrub Daddies in the hot and cold water, a complete transformation occurs. Now, to show you that, I've got 10-pound weights. Here, under the 10 pounds, it's soft and compressible, and that's like a sponge. That's for your general scrubbing applications. But here, check that out. It's hard and firm. That's gonna be for heavy-duty scrubbing applications. We burned on brown and gravy, tomato sauce, cheese, and mustard onto a glass stove top and a stainless steel pan. I'm gonna take the scrub die, and you're gonna see it's just gonna attack right into that burned on mess, scrubbing it right off. And remember, I'm just using water here. There's no chemicals at all, and it's gonna cut right through that. It won't scratch any of your surfaces, but it will clean them beautifully. Now, scrub die is not really smiling anymore, so I'm gonna put them here in the warm water, and in just a couple seconds, Voila, he's back to bright, fresh, and clean every time. Sharks, that's not just another smiling face. You put it on your hand, you can get to the bottom and clean the sides in one move. And that smiling mouth, that cleans spoons, knives, forks, spatulas, even large serving spoons on both sides at the same time. Sharks, with your help, scrub that I will be scrubbing and smiling in every kitchen in the world. Woo! Wow. Wow. Scrub Daddy. I never witnessed a live infomercial. That was fantastic. <laughs> that was incredible. Do you have samples? I do. Where are you selling this now? Thank you. Well, currently, we have it in five supermarkets in the Philadelphia area. We also sell it on our website. I've been on QVC three times over about three months. And how'd it go? Fantastic. They've invited me back over and over. And every time I go on, they reorder 30% more than the last time. So Scrub Daddy is humming. And what were your total sales, QVC, wholesale? Just north of $100,000, only in four months. Do you have a patent on this? I actually have a patent. I have two more pending. We have the trademark. We have domain names. OK, Aaron. What do you need the $100,000 for? What I want to do is set up an independent manufacturing facility with automated equipment. Why do you need to go into your own facility? The biggest problem is I'm on their time schedule. Are you saying that you could be making more revenue if you were 24-7 making scrub daddies? The way QVC is going, and we're just about to launch in a whole bunch of stores, we're going to need that capacity. And I have 18 years' experience running a manufacturing plant that runs 24 hours a day. I know exactly what I need to do to make this thing really efficient. And I'm looking to get a strategic partner who can open this up into the retail stores. I'm only in five supermarkets. That's it. What's your cost? The cost to make one's about a dollar. What are you selling them for? About $2.80. Wholesale? Wholesale. This needs to be in every supermarket, drugstore, Walgreens, so CVS. so expensive. Mrs. Slabinski goes to the store and picks this off the shelf and says, hey, it's a piece of foam with a smiley face on it. It costs two cents to make in China. That's what she's thinking. Because a Brillo pad, which is a traditional product, is what, a 20, 20% You're comparing price? it to the lowest end of the lowest end. You take it up to the highest end. Talk about the, the, the ones like Dobie pads or other pads out there that are, you know, brand Scrub names. Daddy, I, I think you've done a great job today, but I don't know if it's going to work in retail. I don't, I don't buy into that vision. Just in the packaging, I just don't know if I see Rob, the difference. Robert, I, it doesn't sell on a shelf, correct. But if you put it in display shippers, which we built, these beautiful cardboard display shippers, and it communicates the message to every customer. You're end caps. You're going to have to pay for those things. It's well, hard to get them, even if you pay for them. Great job today, but I, I don't see the retail vision. I'm out. I understand. I like the product. I think you're doing great things. You're doing it the exact right way. But when I hear QVC, no disrespect to Lori, when a company's sales are completely dependent on QVC, that's a disaster waiting to happen. I've got 3,000 stores lined up right now. We're going to be in 3,000 stores. I understand. But even, OK, put aside QVC, you're still a one product company, right? Not for long. We've got Scrub Mommy. We've got Scrub Baby for doing baby bottles. <laughs> I've got a holder that sits it on your sink and it's got drains in the legs. You don't understand who you're dealing with. I am, I am <laughs> you're right. Oh. I'm not doubting the scrub market. I'm not doubting you are the scrub daddy, but I'm not a scrub pimp. So I'm out. That hurts, Mark. I wanted to work with you so bad.
Mark, QVC does over $8 billion in sales a year, and I've done over $500 million myself. Yes, you have, and you rotate products in and out of there, and once those products are out, they're out. How about this deal? $100,000 for 50%. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start the bidding there. All right, you're out. <laughs> you know, I'm somebody who could paint any picture, and I think that Laurie is a vicious, backstabbing shark. That's all true. But sometimes I love her as well, because she is the QVC queen. So I'm offering $50,000 for 15% if you can raise the rest from Laurie and if she wants to do business with me. Well, here's the thing. So I'm offering $50,000 for 15% if you can raise the rest from Lori and if she wants to do business with you. Well, here's the thing. You've heard me say before, I can tell instantly if it's a hero or a zero. And I think what you've got here is a hero. No offense, Damon, I don't need you. You don't. My offer is $100,000 for 30%. I will get you into infomercial right away and I'm pretty confident that we could get this into all retail stores across the country within literally weeks. I'll tell you what I'll do for you. I'll give you $100,000. We'll never agree on what percentage I should get. I'm going to change the model completely. You're going to keep the whole company. But I want to be your financier. I want you to give me 50 cents on every unit sold until I get the 100K back. Then it drops to 10 cents in perpetuity. He just wants to increase your cost of goods sold by 50%. Nothing, right? Why well, give up 30% of your company? Just to sweeten the pot a little bit, I'm going to give you $150,000 for 25%. Whoa. What are you going to do? I'm changing my offer, actually. $100,000, but for 25%. The experience, the connections, everything that I have, it will be successful. I am partnered with the best of them. Why give up any part of Scrub Daddy? Think of the relationship you have with this sponge. <laughs> You're selling this thing out, and it's going to cry. It won't be happy anymore. QVC, <laughs> infomercial, and into every single retailer worldwide. That's the power of what we can do just by one infomercial spot. I can get you there. He wait, knows wait, that I'm not already. done. We've I'm heard not that already. Information. We've heard that already. What is, what? I, I want the answer to one question, all right? Do you think 25% of the equity in your company is worth more or less than 10 cents a unit in perpetuity. And he's this all is, talk. Where is he going to take you? It doesn't matter. Ask it does the, matter. Because you can take, are you, can take you keep 25% of this business, which may sell 10 million of these, and you keep it all for yourself. But you're going to be keeping nothing because he doesn't know how to get you this mean, out You haven't had any success. You're an idiot. You don't know what to do. I know what to do. Exactly. I just did a half a billion dollar deal with Walmart. Half a billion. But that doesn't so mean anything. What product retail. is it? OK, I, I'd like to review the Wait a the, second. The, the, Let the, the sponge speak. And it's saying, Lori. go with Kevin. <laughs> Aaron, there are like children up here. It's awful. Let's recap. Yeah, let's recap, are. please. 150000 for 25% okay. from Damon. Kevin $100,000 for no percent and a tiny tithe of 10 cents. You keep all the equity. Lori is offering you a hundred thousand for twenty-five percent. I offered a hundred and fifty last time. Whoa! Hang I, on. Did, I didn't hear that. A hundred, Lori. Oh well, I changed my mind. A hundred and fifty thousand for twenty-five percent. I'll make you a millionaire within a year. So mine just went to one seventy-five. Whoa! Is up to one seventy-five? Yeah. Mine just went to two. Whoa! Whoa. 
The good news is, I just made you an extra 100,000. I'm out, I wanted to stick it to her. Ouch. Wow. I'll drop the 50 cents down to 25 cents until the 100K is recovered, and then go to 10 cents. Will you go to five cents? Seven and a half is a deal. OK, Aaron, you've got two offers on the table. What are you going to do? You have to make up your mind right now. You don't see the benefit of having me as a partner. I never said that. You need to tell me right now whether you're going with me or not, or I'm out. I'm here for you. I think your deal is awesome. Um, the equity amount is, is too much. Would you consider coming down to 20? You know what, I will. I'll go to 20. We got a deal. Got a deal. All right. Good. Way to go, Aaron. Woo! Congratulations. Thanks, Laura. Sure. I'm so excited. You are dead to me, and the sponge is dead. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Scrub Daddy, you suck. That is awesome. Got a deal, Glory. It's, it's a dream come true. It's absolutely a dream come true. I don't care how much money you have. I'm so satisfied to know that you lost an extra 100. I know you'll get me back. It's going to be but a just... gangbuster, huge hit in infomercial. Good deal, Laurie. It's a great deal.